Hank here with my thoughts on Movo's UM6, XLR, and USB microphone. Full disclosure that Movo did send me this microphone at my request for the purpose of this review. Here's what's included when you purchase the UM6. Of course, you get the microphone, a magnetic windscreen, an XLR cable, a USB-C to USB-A cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable as well, and documentation. The suggested retail price for the UM6 is $169.95 US dollars. Build-wise, I was pretty impressed with the microphone. It's one of the few microphones with the half yoke that has a metal tightening knob, and the overall feel of the microphone has good heft to it. Layout-wise, when you look at the back of the microphone, they keep it simple. You have the XLR port, a USB-C port, and an eighth inch headphone jack. All the slick features are on the top of this microphone. You have the gain slash volume slider, an EQ shelf and EQ high pass button, a headphone slash microphone mode button, a one touch mute slash surface lock button. The UM6 has a cardioid polar pattern. Even though it's a dynamic microphone, it requires 48 volts phantom power because it has gain cast, which is essentially having a cloud lifter built right into it. So it adds another 25 dB of gain, approximately six inches away from the microphone. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I'm gonna lean in about three inches away. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If I happen to be podcasting and somebody was off screen over here, just a couple of feet away, this is what it would sound like. As you can see, I'm a couple of feet off to the side. And this is what it would sound like if somebody was sitting next to me on their own microphone. Now, if I was a couple of feet behind the microphone, talking across the desk and directly behind the microphone. Since I'm in XLR mode, I'm going to unplug the UM6 and I'll plug in the Shure MV7X to kind of get a little comparison. Now I'm on the Shure MV7X. And this is what it sounds like in comparison to Movo's UM6. How do you like this sound in comparison to the UM6? Please comment down below. Obviously, I had to turn off 48 volts phantom power, and then I had to crank the gain up a lot to try to get into the ballpark. I think I'm still a little low, but it's in the neighborhood and should be close enough for the purpose of this comparison. Now I'll head back to the Movo. UM6. Back on the Movo UM6, here's what it sounds like in comparison to Shure's MV7X. I'll be curious to hear your thoughts of that comparison. I'm going to quickly switch over to USB mode so you can hear what this microphone sounds like in that mode. This is what the UM6 sounds like in USB mode connected to my PC. Really able to get a really hot signal coming from this microphone. If I increase the gain too much on the slider, it clips immediately. All right, so now I'm gonna press the mute button on this microphone and try not to rattle the body too much. Now there's no audible click when you press the mute button, but I can see that if I press too hard that I'm gonna hit the body of the microphone and potentially create some noise in that way. This was just a brief Sound sample of the USB mode of the UM6. When it comes to pros and cons, first up, I like the price point at a suggested retail price of $169.95. That puts it a lot lower, $110 less than Shure's MV7 Plus and roughly $90 cheaper than the MV7 that's been out for quite a while. Another plus is they chose the more modern style connection with USB-C. Another pro, the included accessories. You get an XLR cable, a USB-C to USB-A, and a USB-C to USB-C cable, all included. So it should take care of any needs you're going to have. Another pro for me is the gain cast being built in. I love that I don't require very much gain at all to drive this microphone. If I stay completely quiet, football games on out there and AC unit and such. But as far as the mic itself, I don't hear anything being emanated from the mic itself. Another pro, and it's a major one for me, 
is I recently reviewed the ATR 2100X. It's a USB XLR combo mic. And a lot of the comments were, how do I increase the gain? And my answer was, I never thought of that. Because once you have your computer gain maxed out in USB mode, that's just what you're going to get. But in USB mode on this microphone, you have that gain slider up here. And that is something that people were asking for that I had never even thought about. I'll be able to recommend this microphone to them if they need to increase gain substantially in USB mode. Another pro, while I don't mind included software when it's done correctly, I'm thankful that everything's just included on the device itself. And I don't have to pair this with some other software to make it work in the manner I want it to work. There's a lot of microphones that are going in that direction and I'm glad that I can just do everything I need to do right on the microphone. Another pro, while I'm not absolutely floored by the sound profile, I actually like the sound profile of this microphone on my particular voice. Another pro is the build quality. I really like the style that they built this in. Obviously, they borrowed heavily from Shure's offerings, but the added touch of the magnetic windscreen, it's like opening a Pringles can. There's just something satisfying about that sound. When it comes to cons, the one thing I've seen on the internet is some people have issues with touching the touch controls, getting it to activate. While I didn't have that experience, I did want to include it because it's something other people were talking about and you should be aware of. Another con would be you need to be cautious when touching any microphone while in use because you don't want to get that added sound that you get by bumping the microphone and stuff. So I attempt to carefully hit the button without making too much racket on that. So I'm thankful that it's the touch buttons instead of the press buttons like a lot of these microphones have been including. But it's something to keep in mind that if you do touch the body too hard, you're definitely going to get some handling noise that you don't want. And another observation, is it possible that you get a better sound quality in USB mode than you do in XLR mode? I have mine running through my Rodecaster video with no processing whatsoever turned on, and it seems like it's a little flatter than in USB mode. It seems to color the sound a little more. I can't technically prove that, but it's just to my ears, it sounds a little bit better in USB mode. All in all, I really like the UM6 from a standpoint of having the built-in booster, the ability to control the gain output in USB mode, and just the attention to detail. This is designed in Los Angeles, maybe manufactured elsewhere, but designed in Los Angeles. You can tell they put a lot of care into the feature set that went into this. Some of you may remember that I reviewed Movo's cast mic a while back. I really think Movo has stepped up their game in recent years, and I'm liking the products they're putting out and their willingness to accept feedback on those products. So I look forward to future releases from Movo. Until next time, thank you.